Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with an absolutely freaking amazing physique update of Horse MD or Marcelo D'Angelis. Now this guy Marcelo, when I saw this photo, the first thing I thought, and I don't wanna sound negative, but I'll be honest, the first thing I thought is, how bad is bodybuilding today if this amazing physique, this amazing bodybuilder right here needs to deplete down and go to classic physique? Like seriously, this is an amazing physique, but honestly, he can't do anything against Big Ramy. What Big Ramy has over Marcelo is a lot more freaking muscle. But if you take a look at Big Ramy right here standing on his own winning the Mr. Olympia, you will see quite a few imbalances, like his calves don't match his quads, his waist could be smaller, right? It's not like, it's not bad, like Big Ramy's waist is pretty good, okay? But it's not like Marcelo's waist, and just the flow of entire physique is not really that great. Like, he is massive, he dwarfs people on stage. But does he have like an amazing bodybuilding physique? I wouldn't say so. Incredibly massive, sure. Amazing looking, asymmetry, aesthetics, shape wise. I would have to say no. Well, this is an absolutely amazing bodybuilding physique. Yes, this guy is a bodybuilder. He turned pro as a bodybuilder. He looks like a bodybuilder. He just has you know, pretty lines, he has small waist, he doesn't have a bubble gut, he doesn't have thick waistline, he has symmetry, he has flow, he has an amazing beautiful physique, but that's not exactly what they're looking for in open, you know, you need to have bigger, you need to be bigger overall, you need to have more and more muscle, and with a lot more muscle, blockiness comes along, unfortunately, usually, most often, you just ruin your line. So if this guy wanted to be a competitive bodybuilder, he would have to gain, I don't know, like 30 pounds. And if he, if he adds 30 pounds on this physique, where would it go? Like, uh, would his biceps grow anymore? I don't think they can grow much more. Like, where he can grow? He can grow maybe like in the back and like, uh, I don't know, legs. But he will definitely grow in waistline as well. It will definitely ruin his, his lines. So if he wants to look amazing, he will have to go down in weight. He cannot progress anymore. He needs to lose weight. Also ruin his physique, but ruin it in a way that it can be fixed. So it's better to lose some fullness, lose some muscle, uh, get a little bit flat and not look as impressive. But you can fix that. You know, if your stomach grows, if you ruin your lines, you probably can't go back to being aesthetic. Now, if he if he loses muscle, he can gain it back. If he really decides to go full-blown open division, then he can do that. But it's just, you know, it's kind of sad that, that bodybuilding went in that direction, that guys like this can no longer be bodybuilders. They need to be physique competitors. It's not the same, man. It's not the same. The weight cap is pretty low, so you can't really be a bodybuilder and do the classic physique. You need to choose. Like, you're either gonna be huge, uh, look like this, for example. This is like the, the middle, right, between the mass monsters and the classic guys. And this is somebody who probably can push the weight down and actually make the weight in classic. But, like, Regan was able to do that. Did that look good? Not really. And this guy, I think, has more potential. Like, for bodybuilding or for classic physique, he's just a better bodybuilder, if you ask me. Better genetics. Uh, I just, I'm just, you know, I would love to see him in open bodybuilding, but he knows, we know, that if he does that, and if he looks like this, this big, if he doesn't get bigger than this, if he doesn't add a lot more pounds of muscle, which would definitely ruin his waistline and his lines, he unfortunately cannot be competitive in open bodybuilding. And it sucks. It sucks. Let's just hope he's gonna look great in classic physique and that he will actually be able to, to make the weight because he is pretty big. Obviously not as big as the top open guys. And don't get me wrong, guys. I love the freakiness. I love to see like Ian Valier, Big Ramy, Heidi Chopin and the others. You know, I like to see that too. But I would also like to see more aesthetic, classic-looking bodybuilders like Marcelo here, like, for example, Cedric McMillan back in the day. I would love to see more appreciation from the judges for these kind of bodybuilders. I don't know if that can work. It probably can't. I'm just telling you what I feel like. I think this guy is a great bodybuilder, but he will have to suck down for classic physique. And I don't know how that will look like. What do you guys think?
Here's another example of a great aesthetic looking classic bodybuilder, open bodybuilder. This guy won't go down to classic physique. I don't think he can. I think he's just a little bit over the top and uh, he looks absolutely amazing. But you can definitely see that he's like more athletic, aesthetic, classic looking than uh, the majority of, of open bodybuilders. And, uh, you know, he's doing well. He's doing pretty well. He won Romania Pro, so he wins pro shows. But like at a Mr. Olympia level, what can he do against a beast like Ian Wallier? Nothing. Even though he has much better shape, much better genetics, looks just beautiful, this physique. But against mass, you know, he, he, can't, he can't battle that. No, that's a priority in open bodybuilding. And I get it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know it is the way it is. I would just love to see aesthetics appreciated. And then if guys with this kind of aesthetics added just enough tissue. There is a lot of physiques that get ruined after a certain point in weight. I think, for example, Fuad Abiyad is a great example. He talks about this openly. So he was at around, I don't know, 240, I believe. And he thinks that was the best he ever looked. But the judges wanted to see him bigger. As you can see right here, his legs, for example, can be bigger. They are big, he looks great, but they are not like big Ramy's size. And there were guys who were bigger than him who were beating him. So he grew. This second photo is 2011, the first one is 2008. So he grew, but can you even notice that he looks better or bigger here? I cannot really, though he is bigger, he gained pounds. But the thing is, when you grow, and he pretty much maxed out everything in 2008, when you grow more beyond that point, everything else grows that probably shouldn't grow. Like, for example, in, in his case, that's like the waistline, you know, the obliques especially. He has dominant obliques, and if he pushes the weight, if he's eating tremendous amounts of foods, if he's lifting super heavy, that's where he grows. And if that part grows, if your waist grows, everything else looks smaller. So standing on his own right here, he doesn't look very good. But standing next to the other bodybuilders, you would see that he's bigger compared to them. But his physique, his own physique, was at its best when he was a little bit smaller. And now we have uh, the same case with Rafael Brandau, who has a very aesthetic physique. And if he grew more, if he gained like 10, 20, 15 pounds, he would definitely place higher. But would he look better? I don't think so. I think he should keep the lines, maybe not place as high as he would like, but still win pro shows, maybe make the top 10 of the Mr. Olympia if he at least nails the conditioning. But like, seriously, if you're gonna go, if you wanna, if you wanna win pro shows at the top level, if you wanna be like top six in the Mr. Olympia, you need to ruin your lines a little bit, unfortunately, and just get super, super massive. It is what it is, but right now, Rafael Brandao looks absolutely amazing, and uh, he's gonna do well at that Brazil uh, Arnold Classic. Alright, next we have Keon Pearson with his physique, and it looks like this video is turning into something that I didn't originally imagine. I thought this was gonna be a news video, but it is turning to a topic, like aesthetic bodybuilders in open bodybuilding or in classic physique. But no, really, this is this is Keon right now. Uh, not really right now. He says it's an older uh, physique update, but it's a good thing to to make another point. Like here is a bodybuilder that can actually grow and still look aesthetic, and this is a rarity. Like for example, Phil Heath. Phil Heath pretty much maxed out his physique in 2011, and he should not have grown anymore. He didn't need to. He won that Mr. Olympia very decisively. He was a very dominant winner, and that was it. Like, he gained so much muscle, and he didn't lose the aesthetics. Later on, he gained that bubble gut, but I think that was mainly, like, the, the bloat from food and the hernia surgery. Uh, I don't think it was uh, anything to do with adding more muscle. His waistline always stayed pretty, pretty decent. In 2011, he was he was already big enough, like he was massive, you know, and his waistline was still good, and he still looked very aesthetic. And I think that's a similar case with Keon Pearson. As you can see, Keon right here looks pretty massive, like uh, he's growing. Every year he gets so much bigger, he's growing really fast, and he loses zero aesthetics, zero classic lines. He always looks amazing, his waist so stays very, very small, it is probably because his body just wants to grow. It's not uncomfortable at certain weight. It wants to be big. 
you know? So he doesn't have to push food too much, force feed himself, train like a maniac, use a lot of gear. He probably can just, you know, go, go relatively easy and his body will just grow. It wants to get huge. And when that is the case, and when you at the same time have these incredible genetics like super small joints, super small waist, you look incredibly amazing and aesthetic and classic while being huge. And I think that's the case with Keon. And that's a rarity. I don't know if uh, Marcel D'Angelis or Rafael Brandau would look aesthetic if they gained 20 pounds. I don't think so. I think they maxed out their physiques. And Keon, he can still grow. He should grow more. And I'm sure he will look very aesthetic even if he grows another, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 pounds. What do you guys think? And here is another very interesting example. This is Nick Walker. As you can see, uh, his focus, as he says in the caption, is to make his physique, uh, to actually keep his waist intact. He wants his physique to look better with a smaller waist, and that makes so much sense at this point. But you guys probably are thinking he is same like Kian. He grows very fast because he's very young and really incredibly huge. But the thing is... Nick has been trying to turn pro for, I don't know, 10 years. He has been competing since... He started competing when he was a teen. So he has been pushing weight and food and drugs and everything for so many years. And in the process, his waist grew a little bit. Also, he has a blocky kind of physique, you know, short legs, really wide and like that, that genetic. But also, I think if he really tried hard when he was younger, his waistline would have stayed smaller. His waistline is not small. Now he's trying to keep it small. How? Probably by not really pushing the foods or the drugs or really like going super heavy on the compound movements like squats, hack squats. He's focused on fine polishing his physique, doing this kind of... Uh, uh, isolation movements, you know, trying to grow, uh, grow body parts that will actually make his waist look smaller, that will make his physique look uh, maybe more aesthetic, work on the details and stuff. Maybe it's too late for him to try to make his waist small. In this photo here, it does look small. You know, it's a little bit of an angle as well, and he does have really big arms and shoulders and lats, so he can kind of create an illusion of having smaller waist, but he can't really hide it on stage. You know, on stage you can see that he is blocky. Though here, in this most recent physique update, his waist does look good. And I'm thinking if he believes, if he really believes that his waist can get smaller, and if he works on it actively, and if he doesn't, uh, you know, do things that will ruin that, maybe, I mean, hopefully, probably, his waist will stay the same. And that's a success, you know? If his waist grows anymore, it's gonna be a problem. But if it at least stays the same and everything else grows, it can definitely make a good illusion and, uh, you know, his waistline is a little bit thicker, but it's not really that big of an issue. He has so many other great body parts and great things about his physique that that thing can be overlooked to a certain point. So focusing on it, trying to get it smaller, trying to keep it tight is definitely a great thing and, uh, and I applaud Nick for that. And I gotta say, in this physique update, he looks amazing. The the, the, the wee taper looks crazy and look into his freaking arms. Just super, super impressive. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. It was supposed to be a news video, but it is. At the same time, it also turned into something else. Anyways, guys, whatever your thoughts are, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best. Bye-bye.